jewel beetles, which we call a family of Euprestidae. It's a medium-sized family with about 15,000 species worldwide. You get large populations of metallic green jewel beetles growing or living in more or less secondary forests close to human habitation. It's particularly common in Southern Asia, in the Indian subcontinent and in Indochina, is Thailand, Cambodia, Laos and so on. And because these have these beautiful metallic green wings, people have, have looked at them and they look like little pieces of jewelry, but of course they're much more easily accessible than an emerald or a ruby or something like that. So people will collect them and use them to decorate saris and turbans and pieces of, of traditional costume. This is the typical jewel beetle that was used in decorative arts and costume manufacture in the, uh, Southern Asia up until the present day. And this is a species that we call uh, Stenocera equis ignata, which is quite a common large green species that can live in fairly degraded forests right up to the edges of human habitation. So it's something that people are going to come into contact with quite easily. And probably they'd have sent children off to collect the, the beetles in, in the forests. Uh, they can't be farmed because the larvae are living in wood and have quite a long development. It's quite a large beetle. If you look at these largest wing cases here, those are pretty much full size, whereas the vast majority of the ones on the dress here have been cut down to, to shape and to size. So the actual beetle, that's one wing case. Of course, each beetle would have two wing cases and then it would have a thorax and a head. So that would be about a third of the size of the, the total beetle. The iridescence is what we would call a structural color, which means that it's formed by lots of microscopic prisms which are reflecting the light. So it's actually physical, it's not a pigment or a dye. And so consequently, it will be altered, but it won't be completely bleached out by light. We have specimens in the Natural History Museum that are 300 or more years old, and they're as bright as the day that they were collected.